Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. I'm Pastor Roy Carter from the New Life Christian Fellowship Church located at 1529 North Wisconsin Street here in the city of Racine, Wisconsin, 53402. Our telephone number, 262-417-7363. Our website is nlracine.org. And we just say good morning to you. This truly is a day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice, we're grateful, we're glad for today. What makes us be so glad? To know that our God is with us. We don't have to live in today by ourselves, but God is with us. He provides for us new mercies that we need for today, just to get through today. You know, many times we struggle with trying to get through life and we're trying to get through a whole week, a month, a year. Just take the mercies that God has given us for today and get through today. And we find that we will go through the day rejoicing, knowing that God is with us. So again, we say to you, good morning. We just want to take the time. I, I say this every week because every week it is imp it, as, as important as it was the first day I said it. Let's find ourselves practicing our health initiatives that our professionals have given us, our medical professionals, washing our hands, sanitizing, put your mask on, practice social distancing. Yes, a vaccine has been developed and is released and many people are receiving the vaccines, but it's still not time to, to slack up on all the other stuff. So continue to practice our health initiatives and we'll find that with God's help, we'll get through this together. So do it. If you don't want to do it for you, do it for me. Do it for somebody else. Let's just do it that we all might be blessed. We also like to take the time to say thank you to all of our financial supporters. You continually send in your offering, your tithing, all of these things we thank you for. You can never thank people enough. And you do these things and the work of ministry continues on. We praise God for you. Now, we're in March, and, and, and back in February, uh, our Lenten season began. And, you know, Lent is those days, those 40 days that lead up to the, the, the crucifixion, the, the burial, and then the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's a time that is spent by believers getting closer to God. I need to have a closer walk with him. And in the process of desiring this closer walk, this, this time of Lent gives me a chance to examine myself, to really scrutinize myself and look and see how I am with him. And so today we want to talk about walking with the Lord. We, we call your attention in our scripture to Genesis chapter 5, walking faithfully with God, walking faithfully with God. Genesis chapter 5, we're going to begin down at verse number 21, verse 21 through 24. Genesis chapter 5, walking faithfully with God. It says, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. After he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. Then he was no more because God took him away. <coughs> Excuse me. I read in your hearing from uh, Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. Uh, we find in, in scripture in the Bible, that often the activity of walking, the whole concept of walking, that idea of traveling, uh, 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 you know, to a company, to, to walk, to, to be in harmony with, to go along with, is used as a way, uh, uh, defining a way of life, a way of life, how we live day by day. 
You know, how we live. Uh, 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 many people, their way of life is they get up at a certain time in the morning. They go to bed at a certain time at night. They do certain things. It's all scripted out as to how they live their life. There are certain people that talk certain ways. They, they use certain words. They, they go to certain places. These are things that we do as normal to us, as routine to us in our way of life. This morning, we want to talk about walking faithfully with God. The whole idea of intentionally walking closer with the Lord. In our scripture, we find that we have Enoch. And Enoch is somebody that, he was rare. Um, if, if you read the Bible from cover to cover, there are very few people that you can take with Enoch and, and, and compare some things he is one of only two. Him and Noah were the only two that were mentioned in the Bible that it said they walked with God. Him and Elijah, they were the only two that lived on the earth and according to scripture, went on to heaven with the Lord without passing through death. And then he's the only one other than Jesus Christ himself that God spoke and said, I'm pleased. And that, that, that he pleased God. He pleased God. And the reason that uh, I think uh, Enoch has this, this wonderful testimony is what we want to look at today. The very fact that in the scripture, in verse number 24, it says Enoch walked faithfully with God. Enoch walked faithfully with God. God. He walked with God. He walked in harmony with God. You say in harmony. What do you mean when you say in harmony? You ever see a group of singers on TV? Um, I, I'm not a, a, a particular, there, there, uh, uh, there's several music shows on TV where you can go on and if you sing really well, they'll, you know, make you a star. Can you imagine what it would be like if you got a group on there that's singing together and they're not singing in harmony with each other. The notes aren't blending together. And so one is singing in one key, one singing in another key, one singing fast, one singing slow, one ain't singing at all because he got a bad attitude today. They're not in harmony. We're talking about walking faithfully with God. We're talking about walking in harmony with God. So let's take a look at this, this walk that Enoch had with God and examine some things that will help us to be able to walk faithfully with God. Because remember, our whole aim during this Lenten season time is to get closer to God, to have a better walk with him. Now, I'm not diminishing. You may already be walking with him in a good way. I guarantee you, you can walk better. I guarantee you, you can walk closer to God. If I'm closer with him, I can share with him more what he would have for me. The first thing that apparently Enoch had to understand in order for him to walk faithfully with God, Enoch understood he was walking with God. Many of us don't understand that our walk as a believer is about walking with God. If I'm walking with God, there's some stuff I just ain't going to do because I don't want God to be displeased with me in my doing this, this disobedience to him. I'm talking about stuff that you can control, places that you don't have to go, things that you don't have to say. Enoch realized he was walking with God. The text says Enoch walked faithfully with God. He wasn't just walking with anybody. He was walking with God. And the, 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 the important thing that Enoch apparently understood was that if I'm walking with God, there is an important part of this because I'm getting from him what I can't do for myself. I'm getting from God those things that I need that I can't do on my own. And it came to realize that God was the creator, the creator of all things. And many of us like to say that we know that God is the creator of all things. But when I can understand that he creates everything, he, everything that was made, God made. And check it, get, get the flip side of that. He is the creator I'm the creature. I am the thing that is created by God. That means I need to allow him to take charge. 
because he is the one that he created everything. Enoch realized that I'm walking with God because God is holy. And man, me, we're sinful. We're willful. We do what we want to do. God is holy. And, 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 and Enoch came to realize that. You know, if we look at scripture and you can go countless scripture, countless in, in Joshua and first Kings and second uh, Kings and first Samuel and Job and the Psalms and Leviticus. And it just goes on and on and on. And, and then there were prophets of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Hosea and, and Amos and Habakkuk and Isaiah. They all proclaimed God is holy, holy being without sin, perfect and upright in all of his ways. God is holy versus us, mankind, that Romans talks about in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. It says, everybody done sin. Everybody, for all have sinned and come short, fallen short of the glory of God. Enoch realized that I'm walking with God because God is the judge. And mankind has to face the judgment of God. We've got to face God in judgment. Enoch realized this. So who better to get in harmony with? Who better to walk in step with than God? Enoch walked faithfully with God. Man tries to, man sins and then tries to hide their sins. You know, that, that's why so much foolishness go on at dark when it's dark outside. Because people don't want to be seen in their sin, usually. Now you got some folks that are just bold. And they just going to do what they going to do when they going to do it. And if you don't like it, they're too bad. You know how people do. But even as, remember back in the, in the beginning when God created everything and he made Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve sinned. They disobeyed God. And in that disobeying of God, they immediately tried to hide themselves from God. They didn't want to face God knowing that they had done wrong. But then here comes God looking for them. And finds them. Man sins and then tries to hide his sin from God while God sees everything. There's nothing that we do that God does not see. Nothing that God does not see. Now, Enoch knew all of this sort of stuff. He knew all this stuff. Enoch realized that, you know, the, the, the words that Isaiah spoke in Isaiah 55 and verse number 8, God is speaking and God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, nor is there sin concealed from my eyes. Can't hide it from God. Enoch realized this. So that's somebody I want to get in step with. I want to walk faithfully in harmony with this God that we have. Enoch realized this. To walk faithfully with God as Enoch did we got to understand that we're walking with God. It's time that many of us realize we're walking with God and stop the foolishness that we do. Stop the foolishness that we do. We just can't go on and live however we want to live. You can do that, but then you pay the consequences for doing that. It's one thing when something happens to you and you weren't aware of it. It's something else when it happens because you yeah, ever see somebody run out of gas in the car. It's bad enough when you ran out of gas and you just weren't mindful. It's something else when you looked at that hand and saw it was all empty and you kept on driving anyways. That's how folks get stranded. It's one thing to walk. It's something else to walk faithfully with God. Enoch realized I'm walking with God. The one that's all powerful. The one that can do everything. The one that is in control of everything. And I realize this. So to walk faithfully, he realized that I'm walking with God. And then not only did he realize that I'm walking with God, but Enoch realized and understood that for me to walk with God, I got to have faith. I got to have faith. Faith. You go over to Hebrews chapter 11 when it's talking about people that lived by faith. Enoch is one of those people that's listed over there. And it points out in verse number five of Hebrews chapter 11 that Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. 
Okay, so he pleased God. How did he please God? The very next verse tells us the fact that he pleased God because it says in verse number six, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that lets us know that Enoch was a man of faith. What do you mean when you say a man of faith? He put his trust in God and the things that God said. God said it, I believe it, and I'm going to act accordingly. It's one thing to know something. It's something else to act on what you know. And today, too many people say that they know God, they know about God, but they choose to act as though they don't. Enoch realized that I'm just a man and I can't make it by myself. Have you ever come to that realization that you can't make it by yourself? That I tried. I thought I knew everything. Now, I always say, I'm a pretty smart guy. You know, I, I ain't dumb. You ain't dumb. But many things I can't figure out on my own. I can't do them by myself. And I find myself being like Apostle Paul. You know, he made mention about he got the thorn in the flesh. and He got all this stuff that's going on. And he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 5, he says, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything is of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Enoch, like Apostle Paul, realized that in order to make it through life, in order to get over the hurdles that life will throw your way, in order to get by the obstacles that we find there, it's going to take somebody bigger and better than me. How about God? Some of you have been struggling with stuff and you've been struggling with it for years. How about turning it over to the Lord? You can't handle it. You can't handle it. So turn it over to one who can, God, and walk faithfully with him. This is what I see happen often. People will turn something over to the Lord, and the minute things start looking better, they stop walking with God. Think about how foolish that is. Why would I leave the one that I can depend on, the one that allows me to live in the sufficiency of his power, in his strength, in his wisdom? Why would I turn from that? But that's what many people do. Don't find yourself doing that. Turn and start walking faithfully with God and stay there. Keep up with him. Walk with him. God is our sufficiency. When we walk in faith, when I say walking in faith, I'm saying, you know, faith is that substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. I'm believing God will do everything that he said he will do. So I'm believing in God's power. I'm believing in his power because the word helps me to understand. Apostle Paul often made mention. He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Why would I need to be in the power of his might? Because mine ain't going to work. Mine ain't strong enough. You know, I, I remember when I bought some new furniture one time. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big, decent-sized guy. I had my nephew helping me. And because I was sick, I was very weak. And I just couldn't, I, I couldn't even hold up my end of the couch. And he finally, he had pity on me. Thank you, Jesus. And he said, just get out the way. You stand over there and just guide it through because, and he said, I'll make it happen. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, he, he's a little guy. He's a little, you know, uh, uh, shorter in stature than me. And I'm going, Lord, he ain't going to be able to do it. He said, I got you. I got you. And he pushed that thing until he made it happen. I, I, I was so glad for him because I couldn't do it by myself. I needed somebody to come and do for me what I couldn't do. And he was willing to do it. Willing to do it. God is willing to help you. But you got to recognize his power. And understand that he is able to do it. And then find yourself growing stronger in the power of his might. Because your power ain't worth nothing. To walk by faith means that I grow in Christ. And I grow in the knowledge of him. I find myself, since I receive him, I can't stand the spot that I was in when I first accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I grow in him. I grow to know him better. You know, think about whoever you, you date or whoever you married with. Hopefully you know them a whole lot better than you do the first day you met them. 
Because the first day you met them, all you know was they look good. I'm just saying. You want to get to know Jesus Christ. Know his ins and outs. Then you can do the things that he requires of us to do. To walk by faith with God. It allows me to share an intimate fellowship with him. Many of us are calling ourselves believers and we're saying we're walking with him, but we have no intimate relationship with him. You know, when I talk about intimate, I'm talking about that, that close, personal, uh, fa familiar stuff with him that just us got it going on. You know, I, I said people that are, are intimate with each other, they can look at each other in a room. There'd be a thousand other people in there and they look at each other a certain way and don't part their lips. But the other one know exactly what they're talking about. Exactly what they're saying. Why? Because of the intimacy that is there. And he's, uh, Enoch had an intimacy with God that allowed him, then I'm close enough to him. And in my intimacy with him, it allows me to share guidance from him. Guidance from him. Psalm, Psalm 14 and 8 points out the fact that God, this is our God, forever and ever, he will be our guide even to the end. When I got somebody with me that I can trust, you can trust God. I'm telling you, you can trust him. You can trust him even when you can't see him. You ever been driving somewhere, those of you that drive, and you don't know where you're going? But you got somebody in a car that knows exactly where they're going. They done been through it. They done been there. They know where they're going. And, and, and you have a confidence in them that allows you to just go the way they say go. Turn when they say turn. Speed up when they say speed up. Whatever they say, because of your they know the way. They know the detours. They know the turnarounds. They know all of these sorts of things. They know, get the gas before we go on further. Because there ain't another gas station for another, I don't know, 300, 400 miles. It's easy to travel when you're traveling with somebody who knows the way. Who better than Jesus? So we got to find ourselves walking with him faithfully, intimately. That's what allows us to live out Proverbs chapter 3 and verse uh, that, that 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways acknowledge him and then he'll direct our paths. We want him to direct our paths and we ain't willing to lean on him. We ain't willing to trust him. We're not willing to acknowledge him in all of our ways. Let's find ourselves doing this. I need to walk faithfully with God who can help me. And then many of us, I said this earlier when I, when I first came on, we're trying to get through life. We're trying to get through the year. We're trying to get through the month, through the week without understanding that God gives for us each day what we need to get through that day. And if I can rely on him day by day in my intimate relationship with him, the words in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22 and 23, because of the Lord's great love for me, for you, because of God's great love for us, we are not consumed. The problems don't overwhelm us. The problems don't take us out. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So when I'm walking with God, I'm not walking by myself. I'm not walking by myself and I have somebody who will comfort me, who will help me, who will strengthen me as I go through each day to get through each day. We can make it. But you got to walk faithfully with God. Isaiah 40 and 31, y'all know that scripture that tells us that when we wait on the Lord, we renew our strength. Be able to mount up our wings as eagles. Run and not be weary. Walk and not faint. But that comes when we're walking faithfully with God. And when we're walking with him, we got somebody with us, you know, as kids, many times, you know, when you walk to school or whatever, you didn't just walk home with everybody. You walked home with somebody that was a companion to you in that you could share things with them. When I'm walking with the Lord in an intimate way, I'm able then to share with him the protection that he provides, 
because I'm walking faithfully with him. I get his protection. You know, there, there, there's, there's Psalm 18. It points out, it says, the Lord is my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my strength. In him will I trust, my buckler, my, the horn of my salvation, my high tower. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised so that I shall be saved from my enemies. He's my ever-present help in the time of trouble. He'll defend and protect us as we walk faithfully with him. We can make it. We can. We can make it. But we got to walk faithfully with God just as Enoch did. Now, not only do we understand that we're walking with God and, and not only does it require faith, I believe in him. And then we act based on our faith, I believe in him. But you got to understand you going somewhere. God just don't have us wandering around in, in, in la-la land. If I'm walking with God faithfully, I'm going somewhere. I got a destiny. I got God as a plan for my life, and God is going to make it happen in my life. I just got to allow God to unfold in my life. When we read uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 5 that still talks about Enoch, it says in verse number five, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. By faith, Enoch was, in old King James Version said, translated, that he should not see death. When you talk about something being translated, that means, uh, from biblically speaking, it was carried over or it was crossed over. God will carry you over, will cross you over. Now, remember, we're going somewhere because I'm living faithfully with God. I'm walking faithfully with God. Not only will he carry me over problems, not only will he carry me over situations and circumstances and, and issues and all of these sorts of things. You know, if God is carrying me through, I don't know too many babies, too many young children. I see my niece sometimes carrying my nephew. He'll, he'll be two in a few months. When she pick him up, he has no worries in the world. No worries in the world. He ain't thinking about nothing. No danger, no nothing. As a matter of fact, he'll run to her sometimes to get, to get away. He, he don't want to be close to me. And he's going to run to his mama and she'll pick him up. He feels safe. He feels secure. When we are with God, we are going somewhere. And God carries us through. Now, the ultimate thing that many of us will face is death. It's appointed unto man once to die and after death to judgment. But if I got God carrying me, even through my death, I'm good. I love the fact that Jesus said in, in, in John 14, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when it's the right time, I'm going to come and receive you and take you on home. Where I be, that's where you're going to be. I'm looking forward to the day when I won't have to live in life here on earth as we live. And you say, well, how can you be excited about dying? I didn't say I was excited about dying. I said, I'm excited about going to live in an eternal place that the Lord has prepared for me. Because everything I read about it, ain't no sickness, ain't no death, ain't no sorrow, ain't no none of these things. But I only get to take advantage of them and the Lord will carry me through life to that place. If I walk faithfully with the Lord. So today I challenge you. As we, you know, go through this Lenten journey, get closer to the Lord. How can I get closer to him? Find yourself reading about him in his word. Well, you will see what he likes and what he don't like. You'll see his character and who he is and all of those sorts of things. And then find yourself talking to him that he might invade your life. Many times we want to change our lives and we, th we want things to be better, but we try to do it on our own. I don't have to do it on my own when I invite the Lord in and allow him to invade. Let him come and transform your life. Let him come and change your life that it might become all that he would have it to be because I'm walking in harmony with him. Today, let's find ourselves being like Enoch. And walking faithfully with God. Don't have God out there looking wondering where you at. Because you didn't show up this morning. No, I'm walking faithfully with him. Even trials and tribulations may come. But I'm going to walk faithfully with him. That I might share them with him. 
knowing that he is my help. And there's nothing that befalls me, nothing that comes my way, nothing that attacks me, nothing that, that could dismay me, that God is not greater than. So let's find ourselves walking faithfully with God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. We bless you because you are our God and we love you. And we know beyond the shell of a doubt that you love us, Father. So today, we just come to you. First, to honor you and worship you and praise you because you are God. You're magnificent in all of your ways. You're holy and perfect and upright. Oh, God, we love you. We love you. We love you. Father, we love you and we know that you love us in that you created a way of salvation for us. While we were yet in our sins, you sent your perfect son, Jesus, that he might die on Calvary's cross for us, that he might pay the price for our disobedient sins. Rose again from that grave and ascended not many days later into heaven, that there he might see set in the action seat at your right hand, that he might look out for us, watch out for us, atone for us, speak up for us, intercede for us. Thank you, Father. Even now, forgive us for our sins things that we have done in our lives that are displeasing to you, things we've done where we failed you, we didn't live up to what we should have done. Forgive us. Wash us clean and make us whole and help us to remember we belong to you. And since we belong to you, we got to live like we belong to you. We can't just belong to you in name only. You, bought, you paid for us with the precious blood of your son. Let us live up to be the vessels that you purchased. Father, we need you to touch today in every place where there is ill, touch. Every place, God, where there is sickness and disease. Sometimes it's not a physical sickness of the body. Sometimes it's a mental thing. Sometimes it's just things being out of order. Wherever this is, God, we need you to step in, touch, heal, and deliver as only you can, God. There is nothing that you can't do, and you're so powerful that our word teaches us that you just speak. And things happen. So, Father, speak life into every dying situation. In our lives, God, help us to become who you want us to be. We really do want to have a share of, of, of fellowship with you. We want to walk in harmony with you. We know that in order to walk in harmony with you, there's some ways of our own self we got to let go of. Our, our jealousy and our hatred and our bitterness and, and, and all of these sorts of things. And as we lay those aside, we put on what you have for us to live in. Father, help us that we can become these people. Let us share with others the love that you share with us. Bless us today and we shall be blessed. Keep us, Father, and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we want you to go and live in victory today. We want you to walk as the Lord would have you to walk in harmony with him. Continue to reach out to us, send us your prayer requests, send us your praise report. You can send them to us through the snail mail, 1529 North Wisconsin Street in Racine, Wisconsin, 53402. You can send it to us here on our, on our, our Facebook page there, hitting the message thing. You can send them to us in, in email, our website, noracine.org. Testify of the goodness of the Lord. And at the same time, if there is a need, reach out. We love you with the love of Jesus. Share this with somebody that they too might be blessed in their walk with the Lord. Go and live in victory today. We love you with the love of Jesus. God bless you.